You're listening to the Membership Geeks Podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business. Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of the Membership Geeks Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Hope you're doing well. Hope everything is going great with you and your membership. If you are a first time listener, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast app to ensure that you do not miss a single episode of the number one podcast for membership site owners. And if you're a regular listener, you know that we love and appreciate each and every second of time and attention that you give to us. And we hope that you're getting all the value out of this podcast that we aim to deliver. If you haven't already, we would so appreciate if you could take just a moment or two to leave a nice shiny five-star review in the podcast app of your choice that would mean so much to us and not only will it let us know that we're doing our job for you the way that we want but also helps us to reach more people and help more memberships all right today we're talking about generating membership sales specifically from your email list and three things that every membership business should be doing with their email subscribers in order to get sales. So it all starts with your initial follow-up sequence. This is an automated sequence that is triggered as soon as someone has signed up for your email list and it's delivered over the first couple of weeks of them being a subscriber. Now, here you'll be sending a series of emails where you're introducing yourself, your business, what you do, and most importantly, what your membership is and how it can help this person who's just joined your list. Now, this initial follow-up sequence, it should go to every single subscriber. If you've got multiple different lead magnets, you might want to get a bit clever with it and tailor the content of those emails according to whatever it was they originally signed up for. So if your audience is kind of divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and someone signs up for the advanced lead magnet, then you might want to consider the messaging within the emails that you send to people as being a bit more targeted towards advanced people than the messaging and the language that you use for the beginners. Again, this is getting a little bit more specific, a little bit more into it. So if you don't have any sort of initial follow-up sequence, Don't worry about that kind of tailored messaging right now. The most important thing is getting that initial sequence of emails that is triggered for every new subscriber. Now, again, this isn't all about the hard sell, but during this initial follow-up, you definitely don't want to be shy about making sure that this person knows all about your membership. Quite often, the only thing missing in order to get the sale is awareness, Especially if you're a little bit more reserved, you're a little bit more hesitant to sell your membership, to push your membership. It may well be that someone signing up to your list has no idea that your membership exists. In fact, from our follow-up sequence, we get the most sales from the very first email that goes out to someone in which we tell them about the membership. And also the thank you page that they see when they first subscribe, again, where we're telling them about the membership. So definitely don't be shy. Don't go hard sale every single email, but this is certainly a sequence, a series of emails where you want to be pushing your membership. You want to make sure that they're aware of what it is, what's offered inside, what the features and benefits are, and how it can help them. Now, you do want to make sure you're delivering some value. You want to make sure, obviously, that they're getting the lead magnet or the newsletter or whatever it was they signed up for, and you're giving them some tips and advice centered around that. But you also want to make sure that these initial emails are helping them to get to know a bit about you and selling them on your membership. Share case studies, social proof, a behind the scenes video. That's something that can work very well during this initial follow up sequence. Now, when someone has just opted into your email list, they are actively signaling to you that they want more from you. So build on that momentum. Strike while the iron's hot to ensure that they're totally clued in on how amazing your membership is, that it's where you do your best work, and it's something that can make a huge difference to them in their journey or towards hitting their goals or whatever it is that they'll be subscribing to your list for. So this initial follow-up series is going to be half a dozen emails or so that you're sending out over the course of a week or two. Now, again, 
This will be different for different people. If you're comfortable sending more emails, if you've got an audience who would be receptive to that, send more. If you've got an audience who are perhaps a little less tech savvy, who aren't checking their email each and every day, then, you know, you might want to pull back. You know your audience. You can best gauge on the best frequency, the best number of emails to send to them. And you want to get that balance between striking while the iron is hot, while they've signaled their intent to get more from you, while also not bombarding them with emails and actually alienating them and putting them off. And similarly, you want to avoid the opposite of that. You want to avoid just dumping them onto your email list and then forgetting about them, leaving them to their own devices. So many people do that. They work hard on generating email leads, but they don't capitalize on them. You need to make sure you're making the most of every single lead with a strong initial follow-up sequence. Now, not everyone joining your email list will be ready to join your membership. They may need to build that trust and that connection and that relationship with you a little more. It might just be that they've literally just discovered you and they really, really were enticed by your lead magnet. They've joined your email list, but they still don't really know anything about you and who you are and whether you are a voice to be trusted. So they might need a little more from you. Or maybe they're just at a point in their journey where the timing isn't right for them to join your membership just yet. But they're trusting you as kind of their 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 guardian, their advisor, their Yoda throughout their journey. And they know that once they've got past the first few steps, then they're going to join your membership. So, you know, it's not all or nothing. You still want to make sure everyone subscribing goes to that initial follow-up series, but that's not where it ends. So your follow-up series is making sure that they're fully informed and aware of your membership. It's putting that on their radar. It's giving them the sales pitch. It's presenting your membership in the best possible light. But then if they don't join, we want to keep the party going with the second type of emails you should be sending to generate member sales. And those are your ongoing nurture emails. So these are the regular emails that you should be sending out to your whole list on a week to week basis, whether that's a weekly newsletter, whether it's an email you send out every time you release a new blog or podcast episode or video. It might even be a daily email where you're sharing a little tip or a little story every single day. Some people have great success sending daily emails to their list. It's these emails where you're continuing to deliver value, continuing to keep the right people subscribed to your email list, continuing to build and to nurture that connection and keeping yourself top of mind for that person. Now, these emails will typically be heavily value driven rather than a continuous barrage of sales pitches. Though, of course, you are going to have some calls to action sprinkled in there just because you're nurturing and delivering value doesn't mean you can't promote the membership. You can't link to it where it makes sense. And sometimes those calls to actions might just be to get them to read a blog article or a case study or get them to take another lead magnet that perhaps moves them a little further along the customer journey. But you can be using the PS section of these value emails um, to promote the membership. You can make small references to your membership wherever there's context to do so. So, for example, you might send an email out where you're sharing a story about an amazing breakthrough that one of your piano students has recently had. And that email might include a sentence like, you know, Mike credits the beginner's course inside myawesomepianomembership.com with helping him really get to grips with the basics of this technique, right? So it's a bit more contextual, it's a bit softer, it's a bit more relaxed, and it doesn't feel forced. You get the plug and you get the link in there without being obnoxious. That softer approach through your nurture emails gives you ample opportunities to sell without being salesy and ensures you're able to keep that value first approach while continuing to demonstrate that the most value of all is offered inside your membership. So your nurture emails are typically going to be created and sent in real time as opposed to being part of an automation. So that initial follow-up series everyone gets when they subscribe, that'll be automated, that'll be triggered based on when someone signs up. But once that series is over, then the ongoing nurture emails, they're going to be done in real time. You're going to be writing those, you know, week to week or maybe doing a month's worth in one week or what have you. But it's real time stuff. It's not automated. Although some people do go down the automation route for their ongoing nurture, most people are sending real time, week to week, email to email. And it's this stuff that really builds that relationship. 
It's this stuff that cements the trust that helps people get to know you, get to like you, get to put their faith in you, value your opinion, value your training, your expertise. And this keeps the door open until someone is ready to join your membership. It'll also help to filter out people from your list whose interest in the topic is minimal, who were never really going to join, who weren't a great fit, who maybe had an interest at one point, but now they've moved on or what have you. So by regularly sending emails, you're giving people the option of opting out. This filters your list and improves the quality of your email list, which means your open rates will go up, your click-through rates will go up, your trust with your email marketing provider will go up, which improves deliverability. So it's all good stuff. It's all part of building that healthy email list. And of course, you can still do really ninja stuff with your nurture emails. If you want to really get into the automation side, you can do things like add tags to a contact or trigger sales campaigns based on them clicking a specific link or opening a specific email or viewing certain content that might indicate that they're a strong lead and maybe worth pushing a little bit more to join your membership. There's so much more advanced stuff that you can do. But most of all, this is just about being consistent, about staying in touch, staying top of mind, nurturing that relationship and that trust with people on your list as they move through their own personal journeys towards a point where they're ready to join your membership. And if you're worried that this doesn't really afford you enough sales opportunities for your membership, then that's where your dedicated promotional campaigns come in. Now, these can either be real-time campaigns or evergreen email automations. Your real-time promotions will be the specific targeted promotional campaigns that you're doing throughout the year. So Black Friday offers, an online challenge that you run in the new year to help people start their year right, a limited time trial offer or a bonus offer or a flash sale or a price increase promotion. These are dedicated marketing campaigns that will typically involve more than just email promotion. You'll usually be pushing them across social media, on your website and so on, but email will often carry a lot of the weight for the success of those campaigns too. And because they're real time, you'll usually be sending a more intense, more focused and more sales driven email campaign over a limited time window. And you'll usually have a deadline to work with too, to inject some urgency into your messaging. So for the next week, we're offering anyone who joins our membership a bonus of XYZ, but only if you join before July 31st and so on and so on. Now, not all promo campaigns will be sales oriented and not all campaigns will go to your entire list. For example, you might run a campaign only for people in a specific interest group or segment of your audience. You might run a campaign only for people who've been on your list for two years and they've not joined. And so we run a specific campaign to try a different approach to move them off the fence. Maybe you'll run a campaign only targeted at people who were once members, but left over six months ago and they've not yet come back. And this is where you can bring in evergreen campaigns too. While your month-to-month promotions will require real-time campaigns because they're things that are timely. They're things that are happening right now. There's real live stuff going on in the world supporting these campaigns. For the more targeted situational email campaigns, you can automate these for certain circumstances. So for example, you can have automated email campaigns for targeting your ex-members. So you can create a four to five part dedicated sales series that is triggered for each individual person who leaves your membership at the sixth month mark after they've left. So the timing is specific to each individual recipient. You just set it and, well, you don't forget it because you'll want to check in on performance and tweak and tinker, but you're not having to write these campaigns at a set time of year. You set up the automation and then it is triggered. It's all automated in the background for each individual contact for the different situations, the different scenarios you have these in place for. You can have these sort of evergreen automations that kick in if someone's been on your list for a certain amount of time and they haven't joined. You can trigger a three-part sales series with a special bonus or a discount for those people. Um, Again, you would use this kind of thing for member onboarding, for ex-members, for, you know, webinar attendees. If you're using kind of evergreen webinars, you can have an automated campaign that 
is automatically fired off three months after someone has gone through your initial follow-up campaign. So there's a variety of different ways in where you can use automated email campaigns that aren't real-time. And you would marry those with the real-time promotions that you're doing throughout the year for your membership too. Now, after your initial sales follow-up series, when someone first joins your list, it's your dedicated promotional campaigns that are likely to drive the most revenue from your email subscribers, which is why having that ongoing nurture is important because it fills in the gaps. It means that you're building up the sort of connections with your list that'll put you in a much better position to get member signups when you do run those dedicated sales campaigns throughout the year too. So those are three ways that every membership owner should be generating sales from their email list. First, by ensuring that you have an initial follow-up sequence for every new subscriber who joins your list. That that sequence is followed up with ongoing nurture emails that keep the relationship developing, that keep the connection building and the trust growing and dedicated promotional campaigns throughout the year where you're pushing and promoting your membership in real time supported by some specifically targeted automated campaigns for things like your ex-members, for things like your long-term subscribers who haven't joined and so on. And of course, if you are part of Membership Academy, we have a whole section of pre-written copy and paste email templates that you can use for things like your initial follow-up sequence for specific types of nurture emails. And of course, campaigns for certain promotional types that work very well for online memberships. And we've got advanced masterclasses on the different types of key sales campaigns that you can run to drive membership sales too. Plus training on implementing your core email sales funnels and things like ex-member win-back campaigns too as well. So if you are looking to get more sales out of your email list to get more return from your email marketing, then inside membershipacademy.com, we've got everything you need in terms of training and copy and paste email templates that are pre-written for you that are based on proven successful campaigns so you are good to go and you've got no excuse not to be generating more member sales from your email list. Hopefully this episode has been useful for you too. Hopefully it's either given you a bit more direction on how you can be using email better to generate member sales or just giving you a little kick up the butt to ensure that you are firing on all cylinders with these three key strategies that you should be using within your email marketing. That's it from me for this episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Hopefully it's been worth your while. Hopefully you've got some great value and some useful insights and advice from today's episode. I'll be back again very soon with another installment of the Membership Geeks podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Geeks podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. Membership Academy is the original membership about memberships, and it's the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a successful online membership business. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be and you need some help making it a reality, or whether your website is already up and running and you're looking for ways to grow and attract new members, then Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. Not only do you get access to our step-by-step membership roadmap, our extensive training library, and exclusive member-only discount and tools, you'll also become part of our supportive, active community of membership owners that will help you along the way in your journey with feedback, encouragement, and advice. All of this and more make Membership Academy the number one place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. Check it out and join the community at membershipacademy.com.